So, the new game plus for God of War Ragnarok adds a lot of undocumented changes that are worth checking out, including ways to alter the color schemes of the new armors to complete content much sooner and a lot more tips and tricks that we will discuss in this video. Let's begin with the armor of the Blackberry color that got me by surprise and I'll give a big shout out to the Reddit user called Ojuke for posting about this. So if you combine the cloak with the waist of either the Elvogal or the Volkswagen armor appearances, this will also affect the color on the cloak itself. In the case of the green one, this also turns the fur ends on the cloak into the green color, giving it a completely different kind of vibe. Plus, you can also transmog the wrist from the same set and get a really nice toxic kind of look going, maybe even appropriate if you're going with a Lunda build that does utilize toxic damage. Meanwhile, the blue variant makes the cloak now have almost like a frosted overcoat on top of the black colored fur. I think I like this a bit more, it has that nice winter theme going on with the silver grayish vibes on the coat, so it definitely fits very nice. By the way, for those appearances to work in the first place, you will need to actually buy them from Sindri by accessing the new menu right here and buy them for about 20,000 hex silver. These are also unfortunately the only two armors it works with as I've tried all the other wastes in the game and it doesn't seem to change the color on the bare armor how these two did before. I assume because these are the only ones that have that shiny green and blue particle effects on the armor itself so maybe other color changes are not yet possible. But speaking of things that are possible, you can actually activate the secret boss fight against the Everlasting Dragon as soon as you reach Svartalfheim and no longer do you have to wait for your third visit in Midgard. Previously, you would need the mystical heirloom that you would get from that point, but if you already got it from before New Game Plus, it actually carries over and still fully functions. Do keep in mind that if you don't make any upgrades, you will be under leveled, and because of the higher difficulty, this boss can definitely one-shot you, quite easily as a matter of fact. But if you stay away from its bite and dragon breath attacks, you should be fine and have enough damage to take it down in no time. By the way, its new drops include a Forsaken Breath, a Celestial Fossil, plus the Dragon Claws. Previously, it would drop the Jotunheim Force before New Game Plus, and this was one of the best enchantments in the whole game since it gave us 6 points into all of the existing stats. Unfortunately, you cannot get it a second time, so no, double stacking will not work. Moving on though, you likely notice that your spear puzzle mechanics will not work out right at the start of the game. And that's by design, as the patch notes even indicate this, you're only supposed to make this work once you reach that point in the main story when you do get the spear. You can still however use it in a different area and that's for the Nornir chest with the small exploding runes. Well that and the fact that it's also usable in combat. But since they only need to be blown out, you can easily mark them and then complete them way before you normally could before New Game Plus. So it's worth it to keep an eye out for these, open them up and get the rewards inside. Now speaking of rewards, let's talk about the new resources, including the Primal Flames, which are needed to upgrade your weapons, the Mountain Roots, which are needed to upgrade armors, Forsaken Breath for shields and Celestial Fossils for weapon accessories if you want to push to level 10. Any source that previously dropped for you a certain item, like a weapon, armor, accessory or shield upgrade, for the most part now drops its corresponding New Game Plus upgrade instead. This is of course assuming you previously did collect them before New Game Plus, otherwise they will just drop whichever item you're still missing. That's why I fully recommend that before starting New Game Plus, maybe go ahead and collect all the major items in the 9 realms in the base version of the game. Like for example, the legendary chest in Svartalfheim Mines that previously dropped the pommels of the Undying Spire's blade attachment now drops a Celestial Fossil, which is basically needed to upgrade weapon accessories. Similarly, the golden chest that gave us the Radiant Armor now drop Mountain Roots, which are basically needed to upgrade your armor and so on. However, sometimes these legendary chests can drop resources for other types of gear and sometimes even two types of resources at the same time. Most obvious are the chests containing the runic attacks that you already collected, which will now provide mountain roots instead. For double rewards, the chest providing a shield attachment, for example, in Svartalfheim, now gave both a Forsaken Breath, the one needed to upgrade your shield in New Game Plus, and a Primal Flame, which is used to upgrade your axe, blades, and spear. 
I would also not put aside, by the way, the red chests either as they are now needed for this cap slang. Upgrading items past level 9 costs a lot of it, so better make sure you make a habit of opening these as often as you see them. One single armor set, for example, requires way over 300 cap slag just for the extra levels in New Game Plus. Since we're on the same page, you might still occasionally see some of the old upgrade mats for your weapons still dropping like the Gale Flames or the Flame Sparks. For some reason, the game does not detect that you're already past level 9 with your weapons. So they will still go into your inventory and what you can do with them is basically just sell them about 25k hex silver each, which is quite good enough to make a few upgrades and afford a lot more of the stuff in the new game plus. Otherwise, they kind of just sit in your inventory doing nothing if you're past that level. The same goes with the quest, though with a bigger bias towards mountain routes, I assume because a lot of armor pieces exist in the game, so for that reason we will need a lot of these to upgrade all the sets. Otherwise, bosses follow the same logic, so if they previously dropped an item of a certain category, now it will drop the corresponding resource to upgrade that category in New Game+. Plus. Moving on though, let's also talk about Nornir chests as these also change the bit depending how much you've completed before starting New Game Plus. So if you did not collect them all in before New Game Plus, then these will continue to provide the green apples and the red horns until it fully maximizes your health and stamina bar. So if you are wondering, no, you cannot exceed the maximum that was already available in the game, you can just regain these if you haven't done so with all of them before New Game Plus. However, once these are maxed out, then the Nornir chest starts cycling through other missing upgrades, with the next one for me being enchantment. I was missing just two of these in the base game, so the following two Nornir chests provided two that I did not get before. Finally, once those are also done with, all remaining Nornir chests started providing Yggdrasil Drew for flat bonus increases to various stats, exactly like the ones that you also collect naturally. Like, I'm fairly certain that I've collected all of these in the base game, so now what I'm getting is just extra bonus buffs on top. Plus, you can still, by the way, recollect all the dues again in their exact same locations as they also respawned in your game plus. Finally, if you haven't seen the new sparring arena, then you should because it changes in more than a few ways. So now when you go into Niflheim, you will notice that it lets you change three new parameters, including the character you play with, companions at your disposal, and even the enemy types to fight. So this means you can play with either Kratos or Atreus right from the start without being tied to the main story. But of course, companions are the big one here, which now include all the side characters that were fighting at your side during the main story. So this includes Thor, Throod, Angerbora, and even Ingrid, the sword that, yeah, we got in Asgard. Thor is pretty awesome, not going to lie, he does use his Mjolnir and electricity debuffs a lot, but he's also kinda lazy. Brock, on the other hand, seems to be by far the strongest companion, at least in the arena, because of his perpetually stunning hammer attack. Like seriously, he is so useful in fact that I kinda wish I could trade him for Atreus at times. You probably also noticed that we can switch enemy types now from the normal ones all the way to elites and even bosses. I think this is my favorite change because it lets us better test builds out against enemies that actually do matter. Of course, only like a handful of the bosses in the game are in the arena but still enough for a DPS test and even better yet for a challenge or to learn mechanics. That being said, this is it for now with God of War Ragnarok updates. In the meantime, I'll see you guys in the next video.